City is an open-ended city building game. Uh, this was originally designed by Will Wright with the first SimCity game published by Maxis in 1989. This sold over a million copies worldwide. The basic premise of the game is that you start with a blank map with some terrain made up from small tiles, there's no population, there's no land values when you begin and the player taking on control of the mayor can construct a city how they want. The game is a simulation and therefore underneath all of this there is a simulation of urban systems and the underlying sort of simulation is based off a book the creator will write read by J. Wright Forrester. This was called Urban Dynamics. Interestingly, uh, Forrester was actually trained in electrical engineering and not a form of urban studies. This book aimed to turn sort of complex urban systems into a computer model in which social policies could be tested on the overall outcome. Although the model had a particular bias, the model had some criticism for the way in which it was created. It neglected things such as race, ethnics, gender or any representation of a city's geography. There was also the conclusion within the book that many of the social policies that were designed to help cities actually had a negative impact on them. Whilst SimCity was based upon the model by Forrester, it was never meant to be a hyper-realistic way of how cities interacted. Instead, it was meant to simplify how cities work. Woolwright has previously likened SimCity to a hobby such as a train set or a dollhouse. And this overall formula in which a city reacts in the simulation is hidden away in a black box unable for viewing or changing at any point. Beyond the simulation, the game actually has no win state and instead is an endless city building game. The win state is therefore defined by the player. Is the prettiest city the winner or is the densest and highest land values the winner in the player's eyes? I want to discuss the game's impact on myself and how it's encouraged me to enter the planning profession. My first ever copy of SimCity was SimCity 3000. This was for the PC. In this edition you were given a map which you could connect to the outside world as you see fit. This meant transferring water and electricity to neighbouring maps or you could top up your own supply by bringing these services in. What really struck me about the game was the interaction of different city services and the control you have over building the city. As a one-man team, you manage the budget of the city, the education departments, the emergency services, healthcare, parks, planning and transport departments. As an all-powerful city mayor that gets things done his own way, SimCity 4 had a team full of advisors in later editions that would help you out, but of course you never had to listen to these. I must have been around 10 when I started actually playing this game and I didn't know what planning was or what architects were, but the simulation in the game was something special. I think growing up in a rural area where my nearest city was over 40 minutes away influenced this. And this nearest city also wasn't that much of a big city, it didn't really have many buildings taller than say 5 storeys tall. Therefore, the game provided an escape into the urban environment, which I couldn't get elsewhere. This game is one of the reasons I end up going into the planned profession, and I'm sure that I'm not the only person that's actually been influenced by this. SimCity does not represent real life, and never intended to. Even though it's used in many ways as an educational tool, with schools often including the game on the curriculum, in the last what I would consider good edition of SimCity uh, would be SimCity 4. Rather than uh, one city to be mayor over, you're given a whole region to control. In this you can design region-wide transport systems, a mega city covering the whole thing, or preserve the landscape features as you see fit. This total control and speed over construction contradicts extremely differently with the day-to-day -day role of a planner. And whilst I'm not wishing for things to be done as the sort of SimCity way and that quickly, 
it's a real stark difference to the real world. Take for example in SimCity, you want to build a block of flats by the river. You simply build a road, ensure there's an electrical supply, ensure there's a water supply, then you can zone this as residential. Fast forward the game a little, and all of a sudden a residential block pops up, and whatever the game thinks worthy of its height is determined. In the UK, if you want to achieve the same end goal, these are the steps you have to take. A developer would have to first own the site, and then ensure this is allocated for housing, or if not, they might have to put this forward in the local plan as a housing site, which could be five years from when you buy the actual site. Once the site is adopted, you would hire consultants, including architects, structural engineers, noise consultants, planning consultants, and ecologists, just to name a few, in order to produce drawings and reports. These will be taken together and submitted to the local planning authority. It would then take 13 weeks to decide the application, but many schemes run beyond this timescale. Providing there are no outstanding material planning considerations left, your planning application would then be decided by local councillors on their planning merits, who then vote to approve the scheme or not. Following that, the construction of the site starts with groundworks, followed by your steel frame, and finally, once the building is watertight, a fitting out of the building occurs by another team of contractors. I think the scale of how things happen in the real world is what every simulation game has to neglect in order to make them fun and exciting. I'm sure no one other than myself would actually want to play a simulation game where you're actually recreating the entire UK planning system. But as a tool to inspire, the speed of SimCity is something special. Being able to see the city change fully under your eyes in which something like this in real life would take decades or even longer to come across. To conclude on all this, I think as a tool to teach young people about city planning, architecture or any other job sort of in local government or city services, the sort of remit covered in SimCity and other simulation games are, are really something special. Unfortunately the Maxis studio responsible for SimCity were closed and there are other good imitators such as City Skylines which has its own benefits. But I don't think we'll ever receive another good SimCity game produced by Maxis.